Soldiers of the occupying Russian army have released images of the convoy of armored vehicles destroyed as a result of Ukrainian army strikes on the road called the Road of Death. As can be seen from the footage shared by the invaders who were moving fast in a passenger car and trying to avoid the next strike, a large number of armored combat vehicles and military trucks were blown up and burned as a result of artillery and drone strikes. A large number of military equipment destroyed by previous strikes can also be seen on the road. The Russian opposition publication of Important Stories collected several articles by Z bloggers who were complaining that the Russian Defense Ministry has disbanded unofficial drone units of the Russian army. Moreover, those drone operators were transferred to infantry to be thrown into assaults on AFU positions. Analysts from the Institute for the Study of War decided to analyze these articles. Some Russian war correspondents complained about the Russian Defense Ministry's command that it still favors meat assaults rather than remote combat. In some assault companies, only 20 out of 90 men are real stormtroopers and the rest are former drone operators. Another part of the Z bloggers linked these trends to recent efforts by the Russian Defense Ministry to form United Technical Battalions of Drones and the Rubicon Center for Advanced Unmanned Technologies. Many Russian Armed Forces commanders fear that by doing so, the Defense Ministry will deprive them of available manpower that can be used for meat assaults. Moreover, some Russian military observers oppose the Ministry of Defense's initiative to create a technical battalion of drones because there will be no unified communication system between them which would allow them to coordinate their actions among themselves. In addition, it would take a very long time for the Russian Defense Ministry to establish unified communication between drone operators and assault teams on the front lines. As a result, enemy attack aircraft will be left without air cover. Not so long ago, Russian war correspondents were already crying over the liquidation of two drone operators from the 87th Rifle Regiment, Dmitry Lysakovsky and Sergei Gritse, after they were sent to one of the assault groups in Donbass. Lysakovsky and Gritse accused their new commander Igor Puzik of disbanding their drone squad after they quarreled with him and filtering their team members into infantry platoons. Dozens of Russian commentators have blasted the circumstances of the deaths, with some calling for a ban on assigning specialists like snipers or drone operators to infantry assaults. The very fact of repurposing an effective UAV reconnaissance crew into assault infantry in the current conditions is, to put it mildly, sabotage, wrote Russian pro-Kremlin journalist Alexander Kotz. They further alleged that Puzik had facilitated drug trafficking in his unit and falsely reported battalion gains under his command. 
Analysts at the ISW believe that the reduction of Russian drone specialists could also at least temporarily hamper Russian drone operations if the Russian Ministry of Defense continues its efforts to centralize them. During recent attacks, Putin's forces have targeted Ukraine with Shahed drones equipped with thermobaric warheads. This information was shared by the Kyiv Scientific Research Institute of Forensic Examinations in a comment to TSN media outlet. According to experts from this institute, the mass use of drones with thermobaric warheads has not yet been observed. If other Shaheds have a fragmentation explosive effect, these operate through pressure, temperature, and chemical elements. In other words, it's a different mode of impact. Experts of the Institute explain. Vladislav Zelezniov, a former spokesperson for the General Staff of the Armed Forces of Ukraine and military expert, commented on the upgraded Shaheds. In this case, the primary impact on the target is through temperature. These drones are designed to ignite their targets. For example, whereas a fragmentation explosive warhead produces an explosion and shrapnel, these drones create conditions that induce fires. According to the analyst, the enemy is currently seeking all possible ways to reduce drone production costs to carry out more massive attacks and overwhelm Ukraine's air defense systems. The occupiers use several hundred drones per week and only a few percent reach their targets. Therefore, they are exploring every means to scale up production and increase damage in Ukraine, Selesnyov says. He adds, the target of such shaheds can be any object. Wherever they hit, the occupiers consider it a success. The destruction of civilian targets is aimed at fostering despair within Ukrainian society. October saw a record number of shahed attacks and their equivalents over 2,000. Two months ago, prominent Ukrainian experts claimed that such numbers were impossible, that Russia's defense industry couldn't supply even a thousand drones. But the reality is 2,000. At the same time, experts refute claims that the new Shaheds are more dangerous than their predecessors. Preliminary information indicates that this is not the case. Each Shahed carries deadly risk, but the power of these new drones is at least not greater than that of earlier models. Kiev is trying to destroy kamikaze drones by all means, involving both mobile groups and aviation. Thus, one of the helicopters managed to destroy six kamikaze drones in 2024. Electronic warfare also plays an important role in this hunt. In October, 738 drones fell victim to electronic warfare and another 1,185 were shot down using conventional firearms. 